Hi everybody, this is Oleg. Welcome to Oregon Preparedness. Another week, another dollar. Beginning of next week. End of another year, almost. And as we are approaching 2020, few thoughts came to my mind. One of them, Y2K, year 2000, which was almost 20 years ago. Time sure flies. I remember clearly when, when it was 1999 and suddenly everybody became last minute preppers. And, and uh, everybody started to just buy everything and, you know, batteries, lights, heaters, just everything they could get their hands on. And, and now looking back, I just can't help but think maybe that was just sabotaged on purpose. So to boost some sales, you know, which I wouldn't be surprised. <clears throat> In a way, it was good because this is when I first became a prepper. Of course, sh shortly after that, I fell out of it. But uh, I did start, I did get into preparedness then. And of course, in the past five, six years is when I really started to get into prepping. And I don't think I'll stop now. You know, the older you get, the more you realize that importance of the prepping. Especially now that you have, when you have a family, children, you just realize that it's, it's just the way to go. There's no other way, you know. Because when you're alone, when you're single, you know, you can, you can get by on whatever. You can, you can scavenge, you can, you know, get something from some of your family, get something else from another part of your family another day, and you can just get by. When you have a couple of kids to take care of, not so easy, you know. And, you know, uh, back then, 20 years ago, everybody thought the apocalypse is coming, and everybody were getting ready. And I remember I got me a 50... 50 gallon drum where I put gasoline and you know looking back that was good practice you know uh, if something crazy was approaching I'd do it again and you know I still store gasoline just in different way now I don't store it in 50 gallon drum number one it's almost impossible to move because it's so heavy <clears throat> and it's hard to get gas out of it because eventually I siphoned gas out of it, but it's a lot of work. <clears throat> to store gas, in my opinion, the best way is to store it in five gallon gas cans. Easy to move. You can take one with you if you're going on some trip. And um, easy to dump the gas out of it. So it's perfect. So now that we are coming to 2020, you know, many thoughts come to my mind, you know. I'm just thinking, you know, how much further and how fast technology will unfold in 2020, you know. I mean, look at our smartphones. Just smartphones, where they went to from I mean, original iPhone was a was a groundbreaking thing, you know. It was just uh, amazing, you know. The technology was eye-opening then. If you look at original iPhone and current phones, they're so much better, so much you can do. I mean, your phone is pretty much your life, you know. Your social media is on it if you're if you're on it, you know. I personally, I have Facebook account, but only because I want to see pictures of friends. And there is occasional interesting short videos on it, but I don't post anything on it. I'm against it. 
and uh, you know everything is linked to your phone your email your bank just your whole entire life you know pretty much they want to chip people they want to put RFID chip in your body that's their plan eventually but the phone is not far off from it you know take your phone away as I mentioned before in some other video and you're almost paralyzed without it you know very hard so I'm just curious and at the same time sort of scared to think what's next you know I mean these phones already are um, so technologically advanced you know plus you know if they want to know where you're at what you're doing your phone gives it especially it doesn't help when you post things on social media you know that, that doesn't help a fact but that's another story that's everybody's choice I guess and um, I just wanted to compare how people before year 2000 lots of people who were not even thinking about preparedness they became last minute preppers they were buying food water supplies camping gear and now 20 years later you know I don't remember if for an example uh, if there was a national debt 20 years ago probably was but I imagine it was not 22 trillion dollars I bet if it was some maybe two or three two or three trillion which at that point probably everybody thought that can be paid back now I don't think there is a way to pay it back it is progressively getting bigger and increasing on a daily basis there is no way to pay it back you know and the economy is just like a big giant bubble ready to be burst anytime they're trying to save it for how much longer I don't know they make all these claims that stock market is doing great all-time high you know for the past three years and all of that is definitely a bubble you know all those numbers they're all they're all fake you know they're all manipulated stock market unemployment and so on because if you just think about it unemployment right now and I know that for a fact you can collect unemployment only for six months for an example after that you're on your own few years ago people could and were collected unemployment for years you would just every six months go back to the office or on a computer and extend for another six months and another six months I personally know people who were collected unemployment I think for two and a half or three years you know not so anymore and obviously if you are not collecting unemployment then the numbers look better so you can't trust all those numbers that tell you to make it make it sound like the economy is doing great it's not another fact that the economy is going downhill so many stores are closing up for for good I mean uh, JC Payne is gonna close part of their stores and I think Victoria's Secret and and uh, Payless Shoes are closing all together. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned this in another video, but I just can't stress this enough for people to realize that the economy right now is only looking like it's doing good, but it's not. It's ready to crash anytime and Kmart you know it's been closing its stores for years there is less and less of them many many other stores there is like two dozen of stores who are who have been closed or are getting ready to be closed look at Sears Sears have been around since 50s I believe it doesn't exist anymore Macy's gonna close their doors and these are major chain stores that have been in business for decades 
What about all the smaller moms and pop stores and bars and clubs? Those are big money makers and they're closing their doors. As I mentioned before in previous videos, I used to drive cab for a living, taxi cab. And I've done that for several years. And uh, I did that for about six or seven years. And each time I would drive around to the hot spots where I would pick up people, you know, on Friday and Saturday night. Often I would come to the hot spot and that hot spot is not there anymore. Doors are closed. Of course, some of the clubs and bars do close for other reason other than economy. You know, if a fight breaks out, if too many fight breaks out, the, the city just closes them. However, that cannot be the case with all of them. And as I was driving and looking and thinking, you know, what's going on? You know, all these, and there's just less people going out uh, drinking, period. On Friday, Saturday night, there's just less of them. It's not anywhere as busy as it used to be. I haven't driven a cab for six months now, but when I was back in the spring of 2019, I just saw a huge decline in how many people do go out. What does that tell you? That also tells you that people have no money or less money. People are choosing to just stay at home and, you know, buy, buy a fifth and have fun with few friends at home. Play some cards, watch TV, have a few drinks, call it a day, you know? So, um, the economy, regardless what they're telling you about stock market being all-time high, unemployment figures low, all of that is is a BS, let me tell you. Because if you just look around things I just mentioned, you will agree with me. I'm sure uh, this is the case in Portland, Oregon. And Portland have been enjoying tremendous growth in the economy uh, in the past five or six years. It's a booming place. It's a growing city. The population doubled in the past, in the past 10 years, I would say. And uh, yet, lots of bars, clubs, small restaurants are closing their doors, in addition to all the big chain stores. So, economy is not doing great. National debt is just growing like a snowball every single day. And how much longer all that is gonna go? Eventually it's gonna burst, eventually it's gonna pop. And what's funny, before year 2000, everything was better. You could collect unemployment for years on end, pretty much. Uh, stores and all the bars and clubs were not closing their doors at the rate they are now. Yet people were preparing. Now, when time to prepare is more important, more critical than ever, people seem to not to care. You know, nothing's gonna happen, everything is okay. You know, people are just suddenly are believers that nothing bad will ever happen, you know? They are just suddenly thinking that they will always go to Starbucks and to McDonald's and it's always gonna be working and, you know, they will be able to charge their Tesla cars. You know, Teslas, you know, nothing against them, they're great cars around the city, but if there is no electricity, where are you gonna go with one of those? You know, yes, they can also serve as a source of electricity, source of power in a pinch, provided that it's been charged up. Because when electricity goes out, what are the chances that your Tesla is gonna be fully charged, you know? Probably not high chance of that. So, anyway, what I'm trying to say, people are seem to be more, more careless these days, you know? In the days when we need to be more prepared than ever, because this economy is probably gonna get burst anytime. 
This is the time when you need to get prepared. Get a generator. Get one of those electric ones, the solar power ones, the quiet ones. You know, you will need that source of power because it could be that we will lose electricity for a few days or perhaps even a few weeks. And if you have way of collect electricity from the sun, then you have some sort of power to charge up your devices, to charge up your, uh, to have your fridge run, for example, so your food doesn't get wasted. Or if you are like insulin dependent, you gotta have fridge for that. You know, so think about these things, you know, we need to get prepared. We need to get food and water and we need to get clothing and the generator if you can afford it. Uh, I realize not everybody can afford it, but if you can, instead of buying that $3,000 Louis Vuitton, you know, handbag, buy a generator and be ready for harder times and then if you still have money then go buy the bag which in my opinion is worthless you know i mean it's cool and everything yeah i know fashion is good and i'm not against fashion but i am against when people put fashion over something more important like preparedness you know and um because you know when and if lights go out, that bag is not going to save you, you know, that not, none of it will, but your preps will help you get through some sort of SHTF, you know. So don't be lazy, don't be careless. You know, if you were last minute prepper in Y2K, become that prepper again. You know, at least get some things prepared. Get some food, get some basics, you know, get basic over-the-counter medicine, get rice and beans, get uh, some batteries, flashlights, some some sort of self-protection gun. You know, you don't need to spend a lot of money on it. You can just, you can really, realistically spend thousand dollars and be somewhat prepared for probably, you, you could survive on that for a few weeks, perhaps a couple of months, you know. If you have the money, go fancy. Buy freeze-dry food. Buy all kinds of gizmos. All of them will help you. But if you're on a budget, you can still get prepared. So, think about year 2000, Y2K, think about now. And don't be that careless person that think that everything will be okay always because chances are it won't always be okay. And if nothing will ever happen, think like this. Let's say you invest a thousand bucks into some preps now and nothing will ever happen. What is thousand dollars? It's not a lot. Number one, all your preps, all your food, you're going to use it up. Make sure you buy food you, that you actually eat. And if you do, it won't go to waste. You will still eat it. And all the camping gear and supply, if you're into camping, into hiking, you will use it up. So if you're, if you're doing it smart, none of your preps will go to waste. It's just a little bit of a trouble, a little bit of, you know, thought to put into it but that may help you through some kind of SHTF scenario. Or you could perhaps save your life. You know, I'm going to some crazy extent, but you know, anything is possible. You know, without water, you'll die in three days. Without food, you'll die in 30 days. And while right now it seems like we are far from that scenario where we would not have food and water, it can still happen. So be smart. Be ready, stay prepared. I'm gonna conclude with that. If you like this video, please like and share. Definitely please subscribe. If you like this kind of topics, this kind of rambling of mine, definitely hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it because there will be more to come. I enjoy talking about it because I think it's, it's very important information. You know, most people know this. Most people realize they need to prepare, but it's good to have reminder, a friendly reminder. 
Okay, everybody have a great day. I'll see you in the next upload. Take care.